Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us consider that a man who is short-sighted, right, will believe what the person with the longer eyesight tells him, that, um, let's say, the tree in front of them is a mango tree, you know, this is time for mango, and that this mango tree has ripe fruits in it. I'm sure that short-sighted uh, person would be excited because he likes to take mango like some of us, you know. And also, we believe in the existence of some cities that we have never known. For instance, we believe there's a city called Rome, Constantinople, or Jerusalem, even though we have never been there and we might never be there. We believe this on the testimony of others. So when we do so, of course, we do so reasonably in believing in the testimony of others. And we call this human faith. The faith we have in mere human like us. Today, however, we want to pause a bit and ponder, meditate on divine faith. That faith in God and the things of God. The faith which is the foundation of human salvation. You see, it is this faith that has impelled us to go about our, uh, our procession or that we are still here seated and still waiting, waiting for what will come up till our ceremonies for today will be over. But sometimes it is easy to say, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith, but without understanding what you mean when you say, I believe. So we want to think about what we mean when we say, I believe today. Divine faith, that is the theological virtue of faith, means what? A supernatural belief in God and the truth he has made known. Now, remember, we act reasonably when we act based on human faith. Imagine how it would be if you were to confirm everything with your experience before you believe it. That would be a terrible existence. But it is far more reasonable for us to act and to, to it is far more reasonable for us to believe in God. You know, we act more reasonably when we believe in God. The reason being that sometimes even though we believe in people who tell us and all that, man can be mistaken about the facts they tell us. It's possible that the person trying to tell the short-sighted man that the tree in front of them is a mango is trying to deceive him, right? It might be the, the, an orange tree, but he tells him it's a mango tree. So man can be mistaken or may deceive us but God cannot and will not deceive us. He cannot err and cannot deceive us. So it is the faithfulness of God on which we rely when we make our acts of faith in him. So in this sense, you see that divine faith means taking God at his own words. And it comprises all the doctrines of the Catholic faith. So we must note that he who willfully disbelieves a single doctrine of the Catholic Church has no true faith. For he who receives some of the words of Christ and rejects others does not really believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he guides the Catholic Church. So, divine faith is a virtue infused or poured into, our, into the soul. It gives man the supernatural principles that are perceived by divine light. You know, with the divine faith, you see everything through the prism of the faith. Nothing just 
passes your, your, your scrutiny just like that. When you consider the necessity of divine faith, you can let us look at it under these analogies. Think of the faith as what the root of a tree without which it cannot exist. Imagine a tree that has no roots. Well, we'll look for it. We are still, we'll still search for it. Or look at a faith, the faith as what? As a first step on a journey. Assuming, okay, for, like this morning, I came from the rectory to this place by foot. If I had not made the first step and then the second, then the third, I wouldn't have reached here. So think of faith as a first step on the road to heaven. For you to get to heaven, you must make the first step to heaven. It is as simple as that. So if you do not have the true faith, then you, you have not begun to make the first step to heaven. And you cannot just appear in heaven without making the first step. So think of faith as a boat that you, without which you cannot cross a river, an ocean. And so without faith, you cannot arrive at the port of salvation. Let us still think of it as, a, as the star that led the three, the three wise men to the manger when our Lord was born. So, without divine faith, we cannot do any good work pleasing to God or which will merit us a reward in heaven. We must note that acts of kindness and all that done from a natural motive and a reward in this life, of course, people will appreciate you, will thank you. In fact, they will give you a, a medal of honor to prove that you are a great philanthropist and all that. But to the extent they have not the true faith as their motive, they cannot earn you a reward in the next life. When consider also that faith is necessary for salvation, and because it is necessary for salvation, it must have certain attributes that it must be internal, that is, it must both be, must be sincere, both in your mind and heart, and not merely on your lips. So, one who, who simply talks and acts as a Catholic, but does not believe like a Catholic, cannot be saved because he does not have th that faith which is the beginning, the foundation of salvation. And of course, with the, with the triumph of the modernist apostasy, there are many of them today who simply carry the name Catholic, go enter Catholic buildings, act like Catholics, but by the time you engage them in a conversation, you realize that they do not believe like Catholics. That is why we continue, we need to continue to pray for people to receive the true light of the Catholic faith in their soul. Now, this faith we are talking about must be universal. That is, it must extend to all the things made known by God. To accept one truth and reject another is to lack universal faith. This faith must be living. That is, if the faith must be must um, have must be the root and the cause of our entire spiritual life, and it must produce many acts of charity. So, our faith must be external, all right? God has promised um, reward to those who profess their faith in him. He says, everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. So we profess our faith not only by words, but also 
by religious acts, for instance, participating in a procession, blessing yourself, right, in the public with the sign of the cross. Well, if if assuming all the buildings that Catholic with the Catholic name are actually Catholic churches having the blessed sacrament reserved there, as you are passing through uh, the church, normally in those days that people see where they wear hats, they would tip their 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 heart as they pass through the church to respect Christ who is in the church. But of course, you wouldn't want to do that now in front of Novos Ordo Church. We know that they are our those those buildings belong to us, but we can't give it give them those reverences presently. So, because it is occupied by, by the modernist impostor religion. Note that in certain circumstances, one must show his faith. Example, if failure to profess your faith will bring ridicule on religion, or if, you were, if your silence will mean the same thing as denial. For instance, remember that by standing firm to refuse to eat meat on Friday while every other person around you who are, are eating meat is also an act of profession of your faith. And given that circumstance, if you were to, because of human respect, give in to eating meat, that would be scandalous. It would be a tacit denial of your faith. So let us think of it that martyrs suffer death for their faith. And then in our own days, well, it does not come to that, but we should be ready that even if it means losing our lives for our faith, that should be done. Now, think of it that sins against the faith are most serious. Our Lord said, he who does not believe shall be condemned. Now, we sin against faith by infidelity, that is, total lack of faith, as in pagans, atheists, and the like, especially those who, who learn about the faith but refuse to learn. So these people are guilty of the sin of incredulity infidelity. You, we also sin against faith by apostasy, and this means complete giving up of faith by one who is a baptized Catholic. So here, let us consider, let, it should be noted that the fruit of that religious indifferentism that is canonized by modernist Vatican II under the name of ecumenism is, in other words, in the words of Pope Pius XI, tantamount to abandoning the religion um, revealed by God. You know, this abandonment is what defines apostasy. So, to convincingly de defend ecumenism is to be a convinced apostate. Well, we shouldn't be shy to tell people that because they need to know that ecumenism is tantamount to apostasy. Now, another sin against divine faith is what? Heresy. It is to deny one or other truth of the faith. And another sin against the faith is to doubt. To doubt, that is to think that a religious truth is false. Example, if one were to doubt that um, there is no heaven because no one who died has come back to tell us that there is heaven, that would be a sin against the faith, a sin of doubt. Meanwhile, you know, if you have difficulties in faith, you should read up on the question or ask someone who knows and you will be clarified. Dear faithful, you must be aware of the dangers to your faith. Example, willful doubts, 
or an immoral life, that is a life not according to your faith, note that every sin, but especially the sin of impurity, weakens the faith. And also some other dangers of against our faith is what? Reading things that attack the Catholic faith or listening to those who make little of the Catholic faith. Here we see the reason why you should avoid Protestant radio programs or services. Even here, think about how it is necessary to avoid uh, listening to programs anchored by the lay-robed men posing as Catholic clergy in the Novus Ordo because somewhere they put in their, their poison of indifferentism and that is deadly to your faith. Meanwhile, some other dangers to our faith is what? Keeping company with those who ridicule the Catholic faith. You see, Friendship cannot exist between one who has a faith and who does not have the faith. At best, you can have a, what you call a, a, business, a business relationship because you are here because of this business. After that, nothing common as such can exist between you because it becomes an occasion and a, to endanger your faith. So, another, another danger to our faith is what? Um, rashly accepting every new theory that comes along. These days, it's very, there are so many wrong um, principles out there, and before you know it, you agree to these principles, and it becomes a danger to your faith. But also, when you neglect um, the practice of your religion, your prayers, your uh, when you can attend mass and you refuse to attend, gradually that begins to weaken your, the firmness of your faith and that eventually can add up to become a great danger to your faith. But how are you to strengthen your faith? How are you to continue straight on the road to salvation? How are you to keep the roots of the tree of your spiritual life alive? How are you to keep the boat floating as to reach the shore of eternal life? Well, to do all of this, you must make, first of all, a thoughtful and regular study of your religion. Reading Catholic books, the catechism, listening to sermons, recorded sermons, and all that. You must also be earnest in tackling every difficulty. Do not let difficulty get you down, rather get the difficulty down. You see, the Catholic faith has answer to every question. You only need to ask the question and the answer will be given in due time. Don't be in a haste. Sometimes, you know, the questions you might have might, on a first look, seem complicated. But by the time you calm down, perhaps take some fresh water and think about it. Ask someone who might know better. They, it will be resolved, and then you continue. But some people often, when they have questions, either they will not ask or they ask the wrong persons. For instance, Imagine someone having doubts about a Catholic faith, then going to ask about ask a Protestant pastor. How can he give you answer to that? It is impossible. All right. So be earnest in tackling every difficulty that comes your way, because the Catholic faith has answers to every question, as far as it concerns faith and morals. All right. And, of course, you must live a life in line with your faith. You must say frequently a prayer for faith, especially the creed or like acts of faith, you know, or saying often as possible, my God, I believe in you. Or like the, the man in the Bible, I believe, help my unbelief. You say that as often as you can. 
You see, by that you strengthen your faith. Now, the crowd, of, of course, another way of strengthening your faith is what? Living according to the precepts of the church and frequenting the sacrament as much as you can. If we were to have the opportunity to have a priest, president here every day of the, of the year, then you want to make the point of duty to come to the sacrament as often as possible, if not daily, preferably. So, remember today, the crowd, the crowd cried out, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. So, consider that you indeed will be blessed if you take God at his word. That is, if you hold firm to your faith as revealed by him, as taught to us by the church. Blessed are you if you take God at his word. That is, if you believe that he, what he has made known to you through the sacred scriptures and sacred tradition through the church. Blessed indeed are you if you live according to that faith, walking straight on the road to eternal salvation. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.